they've lost heart, been injured, or just realized that the life of a commando is not for them. The numbers in 924 Troop are dwindling. The strong are still surviving. Halfway through the 32 weeks of training, 29 out of 50 recruits have fallen by the wayside. Terry John, however, and against all the odds, is going from strength to strength. And despite huge challenges in front of him, is feeling almost invincible. It would have to be a dead serious injury to stop me, honestly. My right, boys, line out, get your notebooks out. And we meet Bertie Carr, a young officer in the final stages of training who will soon realize a boyhood ambition. Move! To be a frontline soldier in a real war zone. For the recruits left in 924 Troop, the bonds have got stronger as the training has got tougher. Hey, oh, come on, mate. Terry John wanted to leave the day he arrived, but now he's determined to make it all the way through, as long as it's with his beloved 924 Troop. But his childhood friend, Theo Brown, has decided to quit. He was put back into a more junior troop after failing a crucial gym test, but he missed his friends in 924 Troop badly. I couldn't find the courage to, to go on after being back troop. And then with the, the troop that I was with, with at present, I can't feel motivated and I'm just going to perform. Two, three, four. How does Terry feel about the guy? Uh, he's, he's a bit upset, but he would make it, he would make it. I know he would make it, but... Right, are you going to miss him? I would miss him. I would miss Dong here. Yeah. I've really enjoyed my time Dong here. It's a good experience I would take with me. Four max. No doubt I will miss him. He's my friend for years now. Came together from St. Vincent. I'd be ashamed to know that both of us came here from the same place and not one of us has proved to them that we're strong enough to make it. So I'm doing this both for me and my people. If he had been with 94, honestly, he'd make the effort, he'd put the effort in. But, you know, for different reasons, life takes us down different paths and... This is where we, you know, branch off down the road of life. The road of life for Royal Marine recruits is nothing if not exciting, and that goes for young officers in training as well. Riot control exercises as violent as the real thing are designed to give these future leaders of men a taste of what they may face and to understand better what they may have to order their own men to go into. Bertie Carr is one such young officer, who, nearing the end of 15-month training, has just been told his first deployment will be to the front line in Afghanistan. I'm very excited. It's every young officer's dream, you know, first appointment, to go straight out on operations. But that's not to say we're all sort of, you know, gung-ho and want to get out there. Um, want to get out there and do some good, try and sort of... Uh, put things right. I mean, at the moment, it's, it's in quite a dire situation. So yeah. hopefully we can uh, get up and uh, calm things down a bit. A lot of our guys have been killed in Afghanistan. The press is focusing on it, and it is daunting. You're going out to command 30, 35 commandos on operations, mm. on an operation which is extremely heated at the moment. Mm. But I've got all this training behind me. I know I can do the job, um, and I know I've got good guys under my command who will probably just carry it off for me. Bertie's training as a Royal Marines commando has been as comprehensive as it's been challenging. Being part of the Royal Navy, of course, he's been highly trained in amphibious warfare and invasion tactics and become accomplished at coastal assault, infiltration and sabotage. <laughs> Let's go! 
Commandos specialise in operating in the dark and behind enemy lines, inflicting maximum damage through surprise attack. As a commando, Bertis had to get used to fighting in extreme conditions. Cold weather warfare in sub-zero temperatures. And now, just a week after his taste of riot control, I follow Bertie and his fellow young officers to the sweltering subtropical jungles of southern Virginia in the USA. Here, they will sharpen their battle instincts against American Marines in the lead up to frontline action in Afghanistan. The Americans, our enemy on this exercise, are somewhere in this dense forest, and we have to find them before they find us. It's an intense game of cat and mouse in temperatures of well over 100 degrees. But he's pretty sure that the enemy strength is around here somewhere. We've just got to man and locate them. Now the trouble is that this undergrowth makes so much noise that it can be heard from a mile away. So I go to the enemy as well, I suppose. Soon we make a discovery, discarded American ration packs, a sure sign that we're on the right tracks. The Americans leave all their cash around like that. That's... I know, it's, it's very bad soldiering. It just means you can pick up a trail, no problem. Uh, those ration packs, they look pretty fresh. They look as if, if they've been out for more than a couple of days, then they've got lots of crap all over them. So we pretty much know that they're using this. In Devon, 924 Troop are on the ranges for marksman tests over 100, 200 and 300 metres. Detail on the point. Stop. Unload. But so far, they're not impressing their instructors. Oh, I'm going to lose it in a minute. I can feel it going bubbling like a fucking eight, volcano. Eight yeah, I know. Well. These are vital tests and anybody who does not pass by the end of the day will be out of the troop. Things in the core, and I told you all early on in training, uh, things in the core we, we pride ourselves on, mainly our fears, yeah? But it's completely useless if you can run across the battlefield and you're the fittest soldier in the world if you can't shoot those targets. Fellas, I'd much rather have someone that's a dead-eyed dick shot in my troop than the Fizz Ninja. Because at the end of the day, when you get there and you come to fight the enemy, if you can't fucking hit him, it's about as much use as tits on fish. All right, fellas? There's no reason anyone here should fail today. That's all. Mercy! We spotted the enemy. In Virginia, the discarded rubbish has led us to a single American soldier. He is immediately taken as a prisoner of war. One, one, Johnny. We made contact with the enemy. No shots fired. No shots fired. Have a leg up. Anything good, Andy? Right, check that map, we'll keep that map. Yeah, the map's map. Question now is, what do we do with it? Do we crack on with our own task? Or do we concentrate on this? Because we're getting some good intelligence from this. And so, I, I think I'm going to stick with this. We're probably going to withdraw to the where we've just come from and send our patrols from this. So, Whilst the prisoner is interrogated, we move slowly and stealthily forward through the thick undergrowth. The enemy have to be nearby. This, this might be an exercise in the forests of Virginia, but it's not difficult to transpose this to Iraq or Afghanistan, the enemy, Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. Stop! Unload! Stand up, square yourselves away. Listening for your scores. Lane one. Please recruit John. Recruit John. Just need to pay attention. You're hitting the target and then letting things go. The last sort of three or four shots at each each shoot. Yeah. Right. We'll go again. How many times is that? That was their third attempt. John on on hold until he hits. Five. I might so send him out, mate, because he's been on the point for like an hour or two hours. Do you want to ask him? 
run him through once more. If he fucking fails it again, we'll send him away. Get him to have a word with himself. Run him through once more now and see what happens. He's getting so worried about being back trooped. And that's not, not what he should be thinking about. It should be about thinking about range work, hitting the target, marksmanship principles, everything we've taught him, and not thinking about back trooping. There's no reason that they can't be hitting, you know, 10 out of 10 for every shoot. You need to get that one. Can you say where I messed up? You messed up by joining the Royal Marines and starting training. Oh, I'm joking, John, don't start crying. <laughs> Terry's having real problems and needs to take a break. Too many of his shots are going wide, though it's been drummed into him by now that in the heat of battle, every bullet will have to count. In Virginia, the enemy have spotted the young Royal Marine officers and launch an ambush. Bertie and his men pull back, a dramatic reminder that on the front line, it's kill or be killed. I wish I didn't have to kill, but I'm just doing my job. And at the end of the day, we're all people, yeah? We're all human. No matter what colour or race, no matter what's the problem, we're supposed to come together, but it doesn't happen, so that's why we're here to try and bring it together. Someday, all this might be over and we wouldn't have to have, like, Marines and we wouldn't have to have people that kill, we just have people for security, security purposes only and all that. <laughs> it's far fetched, honestly. It might never happen. It might never happen, but at least we could do is try. <laughs> at least we could do is try. At least we could do is try. Good, John. On his sixth attempt, Terry gets his eye in. Though Hamish Robb, the mischievous corporal, isn't about to let him know immediately. Everyone, both of you now, grab another magazine, 20 rounds. Go again. No, I'm only joking, lads, you both passed. Whee! <laughs> if you'd have done that four hours ago, we'd be sitting at home now. So, Terry passes the range test. A huge relief to the person more desperate than anyone to stay in 924 Troop. Finally. Half the shells up there were mine. <laughs> I'll be here. I'll be here. You can't get rid of me. I'll be here for long. <laughs> I honestly wanted to whip myself. I wanted to go and take a pee. But I don't know if it's because of nervousness, but I honestly wanted to pee. I would have whipped myself up there going down in the trench. <laughs> In Virginia, the young officers have survived the ambush, but the enemy has melted back into the forest. Tomorrow, Bertie and his men will be wary of further attack as they attempt to move through treacherous swampland. Nine two four troop are doing what are called dunker drills, a day of being dunked and half drowned in a simulated helicopter crash. This is, of course, in case they ever have to ditch in water. I'm not sure how realistic it is, but I'm about to find out, so it should be good fun. How about you, Terry? Are you looking forward to it? Me? No, I'm not. Terry's loving it. Look at him. No, he can't I'm wait. Not. I just want to get over it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> at least the water is warm, but I still want to die. <laughs> I'm shaking, but I'll be all right. I'll pull you up, mate. <laughs> pull me up. Yeah, if there's any problem, I'll pull you up. <laughs> In the oppressive heat of the Virginia forests, the Royal Marine young officers would sell their grandmothers to be doing dunker drills right now. Instead, they're going to have to wade through stinking, snake-infested swamps to rendezvous with the helicopter coming in to extract them. And although their enemy are the US Marines, they are nonetheless going to join forces today with a section of the Americans so they can get used to working together. Joseph, is that Joseph. Right? Hi, Bertie. I'm hey, the, nice to meet you. the uh, troop commander here. Right on. Uh, just this commander. Part. I'll give you a quick brief if you guys just want to get in the gaggle, just over here. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and grind your ship. My intent to have this troop safely extracted to Camp Barrett by 1900 this evening. There's at least a troop sized worth of enemy operating on the ground, um, and we know they do have the capability to lay ambushes, as one of our patrols got hit yesterday. Uh, so on this route out, it's uh, very likely that we're going to get hit, and so our drills need to be squared away. Everyone needs to know what we need to do. 
Right, right section commanders, can you make sure your whole your lines are clear? There's no gas left, no equipment. The Anglo-American force prepare for a long yomp through forest and swamp to get to the helicopter pickup point. But already, some are suffering from the crippling heat and humidity. A lot of the guys have got prickly heat, which um, uh, it's just like sharp, stinging pains into your back. It's when you've been sweating so much and you're sort of not washing properly. Um, and everyone's got mosquito bites and, and blisters and sores and everything, but so there's always the danger that someone may go down. And dehydration, sort of heat exhaustion, there's always the threat from that. As Bertie heads for the swamps, Terry prepares to crash land. The main thing will be not to panic, especially as the helicopter will turn over underwater as it would do in real life. In a situation like this, it's easy to lose all sense of where is up and where is down, as here with a frogman needing to pull out one disorientated recruit swimming towards the depths. <laughs> Terry, one of the last out, bobs up safely and with evident relief. <laughs> On the other side of the swamps, a couple of the American Marines are being immersed in water too, but for very different reasons. Their core body temperatures have rocketed and dehydration has set in, which at this level could be fatal. Uh, all it was is we were patrolling along, we noticed uh, a couple of the guys, people started pinpointing, uh, obviously looking red in the face, at breath, so we knew uh, we were going to have a problem. So all we've done is give them uh, some glucose gel and try and bring them in here, uh, cool them down, and we've called for a vehicle to pick them up uh, before we move off and crack on with the patrol. How hot is it today? About 115. Pretty hot. I'll pull you out now. We'll uh, grab your kit and that. Sit you in the show. Uh, check you over again. <laughs> fun. It's fun. When you go upside down, you don't like it. It's not something to do. Go upside down on the water. <laughs> the first time I let go of the window, didn't know the fuck I was going, I fucking hit the roof, hit the floor, hit the seats, it just grabbed me with the fucking fingers out. I was like, fucking mate, I was panicking. Just watching the world going on. At last, Bertie Carr and Co. reached the helicopter extraction point. They're on their way out of the forest. The American casualties will be leaving another way, but not before, somewhat unceremoniously, they have their temperatures taken. The Marines head off for a hot shower and food. The casualties, well, they'll be taken to hospital for immediate rehydration. War game's over, and exhausted Bertie Carr catches up on sleep. He and his fellow young officers will now have a brief period to relax before preparations begin for their deployment to Afghanistan. A week later, Terry John is on weekend leave at his guardian's house back in Derby. This is our lovely little mansion right there, Chris. It's Terry's 21st Terry, birthday, like... one year older and one day closer to his dream of becoming a fully-fledged Royal Marine Commando. I can't wait to hear my name say, well done, Marine, this. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's what I want, well done, Marine, not well done, recruit. Marine John, yeah. yeah. Be lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Terry's best friend, Theo Brown, who shares the same guardians in Derby, was trying to come up for the day, but it looks like he can't make it after all. 
Uh, I, I rang him, I rang him because I told him I will. So I called him to make sure he's all right. And he, he says he's okay, but I can hear in his voice that he's not okay. But he, he's that type of person. Even if there's something wrong with him, he'd, he'd say there's nothing wrong with him. And that's just like me as well. That's why we're so much friends because we almost like behave the same way. If there's something dead wrong with me, I'd still tell you I'm all right. But I think that sometimes when we're together, yeah? It just makes him better. Mm. It makes me better as well being around him because we, we know each other so much we could say and you know mm. do anything to each other and it wouldn't mm. have any effect on our relationship and all that. To be honest, they've been friends for so long and this is the first time they've been separated really for a long time. Yeah. So I mean this is the first real separation they've had. I was very worried about Terry because I know in the beginning they planned to do it together and they wanted to start and finish mm. together. Yeah. yeah. You told us last night as well, didn't you? We had a really long chat to him last night and he said he wasn't going to mess up and he was going to go through and he knows he's going to go through on his own. He will have a few more ups and downs, I know he will, but he will get through it. Terry himself is a very strong character and I think he'll make an excellent Marine really. Well, yeah. On the other side of the country, in Brecon, in Wales, Bertie is also on weekend leave and grabs one of the last chances he will get to visit family and friends before his passing out ceremony and then his immediate deployment to the front line in Afghanistan. It's not something you'd want for your son, but on the other hand, he's profoundly happy doing it. And uh, you can't sort of say, well, I, mean, I don't think it's crossed either our mind to say, you mustn't do this. Um, I'd have wanted I to a bit. Try to give him an option here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. which he's conspicuously failed to take, hasn't he? Mm. Yeah. If you really don't want to do this, <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. And he made up his mind to do this when he was about five. And uh, first bit of writing he did, almost. Which I think it was one of those standard letters that he was invited to write to his primary school teacher. You know, what I do when I grow up. Do you want, do you want, do you want to read it then? OK, it says... <laughs> when I grow up, I'm going to be a Royal Marine because I would like to be in a war and because my dad was in the Navy and I would like to copy him a bit. <laughs> I might jump out of an aeroplane or I might even jump off a cliff. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And then well, some colouring inside yeah, the lines. Colouring in. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> oh, entitled when I grow up. Yeah, when I grow up. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, so if I stuck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie has always been a high achiever and a perfectionist. Throughout his school days and since, his love of a challenge has never failed to impress his older brother and sister. We're constantly in awe of Bert. When he comes home, he's always done something new to excellence. And I think that even for Bertie, this is something else. It's something that we can't possibly relate to. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, it's that, that it's... Well, you don't want to put down anyone else who's out there, do you? But at the same time, we know Bertie's such a high-caliber person yeah. that... Yeah, he'll do a good job. Yeah. yeah. He'll yeah. do an amazing job. I mean, I, like I say, everyone's got their own ideas about the war, but, I mean, if we're going to have... If we're going to be out there, then I'm happy that people like Bertie are going to be out there because mm. mm. they're people that could actually make a difference. Terry, just... It's your old friends, isn't it? Is that the girl from the outside before? Convinced that Theo wouldn't be able to make it to his birthday, Terry is completely overcome by his best friend's arrival. You're a big boy, stop crying. Smile. Laugh. That's not good to make me cry. I'm not supposed to be crying. Guys are allowed to cry sometimes. Straight. 
Do it! Wave! Put your backside up, they're waiting for you. Most of the recruits of 924 Troop have struggled with training at the commando base at Limpston. But then it is the toughest military training in the world and preparation for frontline action in Afghanistan. It's not for the faint hearted. At first, you don't get why people are shouting at you and so intent that you have to do everything so perfect. But it's pretty quick you realise why alive. they're doing Stay that. Alive. Yeah. Everyone's going to have a certain amount of apprehension if they're really honest with themselves. But I mean, that's, that's what the training's there for, isn't it? To minimise that. That's why I'm, I'm depending on the training team. I'm putting all my trust in the training team. To We've give got us, a good team, yeah, to be honest with you. To give us the best. Because in the end, if they give us the best and they are the best, then we go out there, what do you think would be nothing but the best, yeah? The best trained, and we go out there as a good group of men. With days to go to his own deployment to Afghanistan, Bertie Carr is on final operational training, designed to give him and all military personnel going to the front line very specific insights into the theatre of war they're about to enter. He is now going to learn, through role play, the huge problems of fighting in a country where the enemy and innocent civilians are often indistinguishable. It's given them a small snippet of what they're going to get used to out in Afghanistan. The thing with Afghanistan now, you've got two massive flip sides of the coin. One is peace support operations, interacting with the local population, trying to gain their support, and uh, you've got war fighting. The Taliban are happy to attack soldiers. So, here's the scenario. A British outpost is faced with a car full of Afghanis firing their weapons out of the window. It looks threatening, but what the sentries haven't been told is that this is just a typical Afghanistan wedding party celebrating the day. Stop there! Stop! If you move any further forward, we'll consider you a threat. Stop! Go and get the interpreter. I want you to say, don't move any further forward, please. If they move any further forward, they're a direct threat to us. And we'll have to take action against them. Stop! Move back! If you move any further forward, we'll consider you a threat. Stop! Guys, if anyone moves towards or away from the car, you're inside the open fire. We've done warning shots and we've warned them, OK? Fire, guys! The sudden movement prompts an order to open fire. Fucking shoot me! He's now fucking up for murder. OK, let's move back in. Go on, Commander! QLF, Commander, if you want to see your troops in. For Bertie's team, the exercise is over. But they must now explain why they reacted the way they did. Why? They opened fire. <laughs> this will be fun. <laughs> Where were you, given the scenario you were based? Uh, in Kabul. Kabul. When do you open fire? When you uh, see the person as a threat to yourself or... As a threat or... Endangering life. Endangering life or about to... Danger life, and there's no further way of Stopping them. preventing that danger from happening. Yeah. Who fired the shots? Well, I believe they were firing up towards the Sanger position, and I wasn't going to take a chance uh, of, of him might not be, might not hit or not. So I, uh, I opened fire. Okay. Was that in your eyes a contact, or was he just firing up in the air? Well, I did. I wasn't. In was it a contact, or was he firing I wasn't up in the air? Sure. He wasn't entirely sure. So you killed him anyway. Yeah. You've now gone political. Did have been white all knocking on the gates of whoever's going, what the fuck has gone on there? All right, can you understand how? I took the course of action I, I deemed at the time right. Um, it, it's better to have done it now, I suppose, you know, so I can, I can obviously have a, have a debrief. There's not, you know, I looked you know, a bit, bit silly in front of, uh, in front of the, the DS, but it's something that I can, I can take away that there's maybe something I, I need to spend a little bit more time on. Was he in danger in your life? No. Was he in danger? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Right, you're now killing someone for not being sure. That means you've fucking murdered him. That's what it's yeah. going to be like when we get out to the unit, isn't it? You know, they've sort of done the driving test, now it's going to be... Yeah, so now you have to hit the wheel by yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. See how we react uh, you know, yeah, on our own. Trash dad's car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> With deployment to the front line imminent, there are still important lessons to be learned. Afghanistan is clearly a complicated place to live in and even more complicated to fight in. The recruits of 924 Troop will have the same lessons to learn when they head out to Afghanistan in about 17 weeks' time. At least those who manage to get through the rest of training, which is about to go up a gear 
in no uncertain terms. Everyone is at a stage now that they know that we're going to go through loads of stuff, but some of them are already prepared in their mind to like, to do it. Doesn't it doesn't matter, whatever it is. It doesn't you're matter gonna, what comes You're going to do it. The only thing that's going to get anyone now, if you've got to this stage, is injury. Really. Injury, honestly. And injury is the only that's thing that's going to happen. Good. I mean, yeah. if you look how many people we've lost already, and it's phase two where you get all the bad injuries, so... Mm. Yeah. Me, injury, would have, it, it would have to be a dead serious injury to stop me, honestly. No matter if I'm behind in a speed march, I'm not getting in any like van, vehicle behind <laughs> picking people up. I'd run if I have to, just to pass. Speed marching is done in full fighting order. That means carrying 21 pounds of ammunition and equipment, plus a 10 pound assault rifle. To be able to move like this at speed and with your troop can be vital for survival on the battlefield. Today, the recruits must complete four miles in under 40 minutes. Who has not been out to Afghanistan before? Okay, good. First of all, I'll give you a quick talk. Bertie and Sam, meanwhile, still on their last minute brush up before deployment to the front line are about to be acquainted with one of the greatest dangers they and their men are likely to face. Okay, Afghanistan is the heaviest mined area on the planet, and that's been added to daily. Your anti-vehicle mines, their main operating system is to form a molten slug to come up through the base of the vehicle and then out through the top. It causes a vacuum inside and, due to the force of the vacuum, rip limbs okay, from the torso. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. 924 troop are well into their stride, but the legs will be starting to burn. The recruits work hard at keeping pace and rhythm because nobody wants to end up in the blood wagon, hovering to pick up casualties and stragglers. All right, any personnel mine can cost as little as three dollars. All right, it doesn't need to be fed, it doesn't get paid, it just sits there waiting. So if you step on it, you're going to lose your foot. If you lean on it, you lose your arm. Come on. Well done. Halfway through the speed march, and to everyone's amazement, Terry, probably the most determined recruit of 924 Troop, is beginning to struggle. He's digging deep, but it's clearly hurting. Come on, Terry. Get closed up now, fellas, everywhere. OK, starting on your feet, what we're looking for is any mine fuses, the presence of trip wires disturbed ground. Once you've done that, we're going to prod, all right? Now, what angle do we prod at? OK, we prod at 30 degrees. If we do hit a mine, we're hoping to hit the side of it first, the edge. If not, and we hit, do hit the base plate, OK, because we're coming at a shallow angle, OK, we just run off the top of it. Come on, recruit John, get up there. For Terry, things are going from bad to worse. Nearing the end of the run and almost delirious, he calls on his mother to give him strength. Come on, my mum. Let's do it. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Come on, get up here, get up here. Mommy, get up here now. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Come on! Terry makes a last gasp run for home. He's given everything he had, but is it enough? Has he made it in the required time? Well done, Terry. Keep walking, John. Hands on your hips. <laughs> okay, once you're happy with that, you can leave the mine prodders in the ground. Remember, you need to practice your drills. This is not enough. You need to practice. Okay, if you grab your equipment, okay, and thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Bertie's got just one more day of specialist preparation for the front line. In less than a week, he and his fellow young officers will pass out of training. Deployment to their unit, 4-2 Commando in Afghanistan, will be almost immediate. They've got to confirm the flights and everything, but the, uh, at the moment it's, it's three days after we pass out. It's the, uh, it's the flying date. So. It's pretty, pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a baptism yeah. of fire, isn't it? But, yeah, you know, that's, that's what we all joined for. And 4-2 is the unit which most people stuck down. Yeah. yeah, speaking to the guys here, when they're here, you pass out one day and go straight out on operations. Three days later, they're all sort of wow. Well, that's that's what you want. That's, uh, yeah, that's what it's the all best about, way of doing it. it. Yeah. So so it's pass out, hooray, bit of celebration, <laughs> and then yeah, not sure how much recover from the hangover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ring up the parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
See, see you in April. <laughs> two of you, good effort. You made it if you didn't do it in the time. Terry's final sprint for the line was too little, too late. All it is is a matter of shaving two or three minutes off that time, OK? Well, let's hurry up. But there is one last opportunity, a rerun tomorrow, and it'll be do or die. Terry's last chance to stay in 924 Troop. Heads up, right? If I fail it, then I won't be with the troop. I will be back troop, and that's not a part of my plan. So tomorrow, whether or not my legs want to take me, I'm gone. They have to be broken for me not to make it tomorrow. I'm going to get it cracked. It's six o'clock on a cold, windy morning and the rerun of the four-mile speed march for those that failed yesterday. Failure today means instant dismissal from the troop. Terry John's greatest fear. The instructors ensure their ammunition belt and pouches are exactly the right weight. Feels a bit fucking light. Is it? Yeah. Is it on the left? How light? What was it? How much was it? Hey. How much was it? Twenty. The fuck is it? No. What's, what, what weight got to be? Twenty-one, 21 pounds. That one's just nice. twenty. Yes. Where all the demos are done. Oh, John, yes. Yes. Uh, and just preparing. John, it's underway. Right. Yes. Yes. Go and get something else to put into it, and then bring it back to me. Not a good start for Terry. With seconds to go before the speed march begins, he grabs some rocks to get his weight up. I like it to show you something in this presentation, and after then we are to, to pronounce this one together. But you are... For Bertie Carr, it's also an early start. He must learn some key words and phrases for the front line. Wasla Kijda. Wasla Kijda. Das Makawa. They've just started. It's going to be a huge right, challenge for Terry. Right, left, La Suna Porta. La Suna Porta. Mashora. 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 John, you can do this physically, it's just as your brain. You need to believe that you can. Come on, get up here. Terry is falling back. Once again, his legs seem to be failing him. Or is it all in his head? It's all in the mind, Terry, come on. Drish. 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 Delta Russia. Delta Russia. Yeah, well, everybody's a bit of pain, John. Right, how much of a no pain problem. do you want? No problem. Right, well, let's do it then. Start running, John. Za. 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 Kena. Kena. Kshena. Sabaroka. Sabaroka. Catch up. Open your legs. You cannot afford to walk. Terry must run, or he'll be hauled into the blood wagon following behind signalling the end for him in 924 Troop. Marmi, marmi, bam, bam, main, main. Come on, open your legs. Get a hold of this, come on. Mashora. 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 Wadareja. Come on, John, get up here. You're not forward to walk. Right, get in the wagon. Get in the wagon. Put him in the wagon. Please, no. In the wagon! Get in the wagon! That is enough! Get in the wagon! Get in the wagon! Get in the wagon! You remember in the middle of this was one word, Inshallah. Inshallah, in Afghanistan is coming peace and democracy. In Afghan people, never ever forget your support. Thank you very much, and I wish you the best, my friend. And good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> no. 
so it just feels so no. bad now. It won't feel like this tomorrow. No, honestly, Chris, no. I don't know what's wrong, Chris. I'm honestly, no, 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 no. Should have done it the first time. The first time I tried really hard as well, but my legs just won't carry me. My legs just won't. I can't do it again, Chris. I can't well, do it again. Well, you've done it once, so you can do it again. Yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't do it, honestly. It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. I'm going to get back to you, man. I can't. No. No. I'm not going to let myself. I can't leave my friends. I can't. I can't make new friends either, no. Oh, Terry, you can't. No, I won't let myself, honestly. I'm leaving, Chris. By the back to I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Obviously, I'm going to get back to him now. Obviously, I am. But I won't stay, Chris, honestly. No. 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 At last, it's passing out day for Bertie and his fellow young officers. And just three days before many of them, including Bertie, leave for Afghanistan. It's a car, sir, going to 4-2 Commando. So, travelling next week? So, looking forward for the challenge? Very much so, sir. Yeah. And you've got a really busy year ahead of you. So make the most of it, because it'll fly by. But, uh, and put into practice all that's, all that's gone on here. Good luck and well Thank done. Thank you very much. Well done. Mr Lee, sir, going to FPG? Terry is moving his things out of the accommodation block. He's decided not to leave Royal Marine Training, but to his great dismay, he's no longer a member of 924 Troop. Quick John failed his four-mile and four-mile rerun. So into Hunter Company for fears, fears and more fears until he can crack it. Hunter Company is for if they fail anything professionally um, in terms of their administration, their weapons handling, or physically, in terms of their fitness, and he'll just get fizz, he'll get beasted sort of day after day, and his fitness will go through the roof until he can crack the speed march, no problem. As soon as he can crack that, then he'll be put back into training. Join another troop and carry on. Uh, it can be rough here sometimes, can't it? Now everyone has their times. Everyone has their times to go through. This is just my time. You're feeling a bit down, are you? Yeah, I... Uh, it's not easy, well. I offer my congratulations to those of you in front of me passing out today. And you now stand ready to test your leadership and your professional skills in the frontline units of the Corps. You join your units at an exciting and operationally challenging time. To each and every one of you, I wish you best fortune and good luck. Thank you. It will be a very steep learning experience for him, no question about that. And he'll be changed. In fact, we worry slightly about yes. the effect it might have on him if he has to do He's things. His sister, he? Yes. Mm. Um, he may have to supervise the uh, killing of other folk or, or perhaps even do it himself. Uh, I'm told that some of the some of the incidents in Afghanistan are pretty close up and in your face, and I think that's bound to leave its mark on you. Been knocked down before? <laughs> yes. Sir. Have you? Yes, sir. Never as bad as this, I bet, hey? Uh, I hate this. I hate this. It's just like the lads that I really like. It's like I, I grew up with them. It's just like that. Mm. I started training with them, the foundation and all that. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. I know they're good, good strong friends, but at the end of the day, you've been with them, what, 15 weeks? When you think you've gone operating with a bloke for five, six months, that's when you get to know them, that's when you get true friends with group time. Stay in touch with him and I'm sure you'll be fine, alright? Yes, sir. Keep your head up high. Yes, sir. Now, come here real quick, John. I want you to have a read of this before you fucking go. Have a read 
that poem underneath it, right? Yes, Best of luck in the other tree. Yes, sir. Come and tell us how you do, yeah? Yes, sir. The bottom one. Is it this one? I will persist until I succeed. Always will I take another step. If that is of no avail, I will take another and yet another. In truth, one step at a time is not too difficult. I know that small attempts repeated will complete any undertaking. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Next time on Commando, Terry gets a shock diagnosis from the doctor. This is not an easy condition to treat, and you're going to have to work very hard at it. And Bertie Carr arrives on the front line and comes under immediate enemy fire. Some of those cool signs spread out of that trench, too bunched up there. Enemy fire positions over to the west. Acknowledge, Jacko.